Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Um, back with the video, and this video is going to be our receivers, uh, and one of the most popular receiver that was developed back in early 199, uh, early 1900s, actually a super heterodyne receiver. So this is basically a block diagram of a receiver where you have an RF front end, then you have I of stage, then you have baseband stage. So let me just walk you through quickly, and uh, I'll explain what is this video is about. So you have an input that is coming in from your antenna. You have some type of a filter circuit that actually filters out. So more normally, a bandpass filter is there in a receiver. Uh, it will only select, allow certain frequencies to pass. Then you have some type of an RF amplifier as well. Uh, RF amplifier, what it does is actually, because the signal that you're receiving from your antenna, it has a very uh, low signal strength. So it actually jacks it up for you. Uh, that's what's going on in the front. Then you have some type of an anti-imaging filter uh, that actually removes the images. And then the next component, which is this video is all about, is actually going to be mixer. So mixer is nothing but a multiplier circuit. And what it does is actually takes your signal in, whatever the signal that is coming in, let's call that FRF. It will multiply this signal by a local oscillator signal, which is locally being generated by your receiver. And it will mix it. The output of this mixer will give you plus and minus frequencies. So we're going to look at this, the functionality of a mixer using Guru Radio Companion. So I have a flow graph. We're going to look at it. How does this mixer functions? Uh, just to walk you through with the super heterodyne architecture, the next step is, is going to be a receiver uh, IF stage. And this IF stage, let's forget about this filter. Let's just basically focus on what IF stage is. It's actually an intermediate frequency amplifier. So for different uh, receiver application, this amplifier's frequency changes. For AM, it's 455 kilohertz. That's the input. That's what the frequency required by this IF. For FM, it's 10.7 megahertz. This is just like a stand rise. So when you're mixing it, you're only keeping it. On, oh, okay, remember one more thing. When you're using a mixer and you're keeping a subtracted frequency, which means... FLO minus FRF, if you're keeping that frequency, which means you're down converting it, which means you're receiving it at the receiving end, and you're up converting it when you're using, you're jacking up your IF, which means you're increasing your IF frequency, that is up conversion, which means FLO plus FRF, that is, you're just actually, uh, that's called the up conversion. So since it's a receiver design, we're, we're focusing on down conversion. So once you subtract those frequencies, that, those frequencies should be around IF. For AM, it's 455 kilohertz. For IM, for FM, sorry, it's 10.7. And then this is just going to be a demodulator and things like that, an amplifier, and then some type of an audio sync that is there so you'll be able to hear it. So let's look at this mixer closely. Now, I don't want to bore you. So this is what's going on. When I'm talking about down conversion, you have an IF frequency. This is what you want to get. So you have your local oscillator. You have your local oscillator frequency. You're multiplying your RF with that. So when you're taking the subtracted part of absolute value of this, you'll get your IF. So that's down conversion. So this is mostly done at the receiver end. When you're up converting it, when you're up converting it, you have your, so this is what you want. So you're going to take your IF because you have already processed your IF. Now you're ready to send this via antenna, which means you're transmitting it. You're going to take your lower frequency that you have working with. Let's say, for example, for AM or FM, you're going to multiply them together using a mixer. This FLO minus FIF would give you FRF1, which is going to be this frequency. And FLO plus FIF would give you FRF2. So that is your up conversion process. So in down conversion, you're receiving a signal, you're multiplying it, you're keeping the negative part. Here you're keeping the positive part, you're actually jacking it up and you're sending it to your transmitter. So let's, if you have this in mind, uh, FR, FLO minus FRF, FLO plus FRF, let's look at it. Let's look at the basic operation of that. So for that, we're going to look at our beautiful software called GNU Radio. Uh, I have two signals. Uh, let's just call it because we're definitely we're mixing two signals together. All right. So we have a local oscillator signal and we have an FRF. So this FRF, think of it as frequency A and frequency B is a local oscillator. The frequency here, both of these frequencies are controlled by a GUI slider. Uh, let me just... So GUI sliders are there. So this is A. I've called here. So the default is 2. Um, and then you're going up to all the way up to 0 to sample rate divided by 2 
your sample rate is 20, 48 kilohertz. So you're going from zero hertz all the way up to 24 kilohertz. And your default frequency is two, two hertz. All right, next, uh, signal frequency two, right here, same thing. Uh, starting frequency is still, uh, 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 you have a signal source that is going from uh, sample rate. Uh, you have a signal source that is B, and that is going one, that's the amplitude. And this B is called here, in this GUI range slider, uh, that is 440 is default sample rate divided by 2 going all the way up to 24 kilohertz. And both of them are mixed together. The mixing is done in GNU Radio using a multiplier block. And you would see, if you remember seeing AM, the process is exactly the same as amplitude modulation. And so I'm looking at the output of fre signal frequency A, output of signal frequency B, and once the signal is multiplied together, I'm looking at it in terms of time sync and frequency sync. And then I'm also listening to it as well. So I have a multiply constant block and then I have an audio sync. So basically this is sort of like a volume control. So I can hear how does the modulator signal sound like. So that's the basic flow graph of it. And I'm also using a label block so to show you what is the sum and difference of frequency. So whenever I'm summing the frequency in, so you have B minus A. So I'm you taking an absolute value. Uh, you will still get a positive frequency number. Why? Because sometimes I might have frequency B frequency using a slider which is going to be much lower. Um, and that could happen. So just keeping that in mind, that's why I'm taking an absolute value. And the reason I'm taking an absolute value because because of this, you have to take an absolute value of this. All right. So so that's the idea. In down conversion, you are taking an absolute value. So you, you will get like perfect numbers. So let's run this. Uh, let's run this. So, so as you can clearly hear this, this is the modulated tone where I have my frequency B, think of it as a local oscillator. It's at 440 hertz and then I have frequency A which is 2 hertz. So this is what the 2 hertz frequency looked like. Now if I were to go up here. Now if you were to look at it, let me pause this for you. Uh, let me stop this. Doesn't that look like a? Let me start this and let me pause this. Doesn't that look something like an amplitude modulated signal? It is indeed an amplitude modulated signal because an amplitude modulated signal we have FC plus FM and FC minus FM. Here exactly the same process is taking place. FLO minus FRF, FLO plus FRF. Exactly the same thing is happening. So here is the output spectrum. Uh, let's visualize this spectrum a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this frequency a little bit. I'm going to change this to 50, kilo, 50 hertz. So I can clearly see this. Yeah. Now frequency has, continued, has changed. This is the output modulated frequency. Now here's what I'm seeing as a spectrum. The spectrum is quite not clear. So I'm just going to simply select this. You know what? Here we go. Now if I were to look at it, let's look at it. Let's look at first of all, let's look at my, so my frequency when I sum it up uh, in a mixer, it should be FR, FLO plus, F, uh, plus FRF, which is going to be 440 kilohertz, 440 hertz, all the way up to 50 hertz, that would give me 490 hertz. So that's the sum frequency and the difference is going to be 440 minus 50 would give me 390. So let's look at it indeed what we are getting. Yes, it is 490. And this is exactly 390 hertz, 90 kilohertz. 390 hertz or 0.39 kilohertz. So that's the idea regarding, um, this is how the mixing process normally takes place. And this is how the modulated frequency, uh, which is being modulated using a 440. So basically this is acting as a carrier. Always remember that your your local oscillator frequency is going to be much higher as compared to your FRF because your FRF frequency will be coming in based on because the local oscillator is the one that you have control over. Uh, you don't have control over the over the frequencies that is coming from your antennas except for the after bas baseband signal. You're just getting a chunk of frequencies, but you can you can calculate the sum and addition of those frequencies using the control on your local oscillator, which is part of your receiver design so so i hope you like this small tutorial on uh, mixer and if you have any questions leave it in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel